QuickBooks Online. Print, email, and create PDF of reports. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to be picking the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at 125% on the zoom in. Noting in the cog drop down, we're currently in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is located in each of them. We're going to be duplicating some tabs by right clicking on the tab up top to duplicate it and then right click on the duplicated tab to duplicate it again as the tab to the right things we're going to go to the tab in the middle and down to the reports on the left this time opening up the balance sheet report as that's thinking back to the tab to the right open up the reports on the tab to the left and open the profit and loss the p to the l the income statement then i'm going to close the hamburger otherwise known as the ham boogie Range change up top from a 10122 tab, 123122 tab. Run it to refresh it back to the tab to the middle to do the same thing on the closing of the hand boogie. Rangings to changings, 010122 tab, 123122 tab. Run it because we want to refresh it. And that's how you do it. So this is the balance sheet. We've been focusing in on our reports on the balance sheet reports. And now we're thinking about how we can present those balance sheet reports to a client possibly at the end of the month, quarter, or year. We talked about a few different options in that we're going to have multiple reports. First thing we want to understand, we could have multiple reports. We saw just with the balance sheet reports that we can, we can make like almost an infinite number of balance sheet reports when we have these comparative reports, vertical analysis, horizontal analysis, comparing this year to last year, and so on. So when we provide them to the client, we want to do so in such a way that it's professional looking because that's going to be half our job really is to make it look nice, provide confidence with the fact that it's a nice clean looking report. So one way we could do that is to create the reports and then possibly uh, memorize or customization or save the customization of the reports so that if I go into my report center on the left tab reports, and to the customized reports, I can have my list of reports. Then we can basically uh, organize them. And then the question is, how are we gonna organize them? We could use the manage reports that we saw in a prior presentation to give a little bit of a professional feel and use that for our customization. We might just print out the reports one by one, for example, and then email them uh, to our clients with an email, but Oftentimes that means we're going to be sending them one at a time. And if we're sending a bundle of reports, that's probably not the best way to do it. We could save all the reports uh, at, on a cloud drive, but if we do that, the reports could be a little bit out of order. So we might want to number the reports to give some indication on how they might want to be opened in order. Uh, so we could do that. Uh, we could zip the file so that we provide it to a client as a zipped file to an attached email, for example, which would be better than an email with 10 attachments. Uh, or we can use the cute PDF printer or a PDF printer and Excel to try to get all of the reports on one PDF file. So that's another way we could do that. We could do that with a, with Excel and we can do that with the manager over here. So we'll, we'll use the Excel option in a following presentation to show that. And we can get more detail than that if we want to make more formalized reports, kind of combining Excel and Word to create, you know, a formalized report structure. 
So we won't get into that in a lot of detail. So first, let's just organize our reports and save them as a PDF and then zip them. And then we'll talk about Excel in a following presentation. So I'm gonna recreate a couple balance sheet reports. So let's, I'm gonna right click on this one again and duplicate it and then go back down to uh, the reports on the left hand side and let's make a summary balance sheet again i'm going to go to the standard reports and i'm going to close the hand boogie and then scroll down i'm looking for the summary balance sheet so this oftentimes might be the first report we provide to somebody so i might try to save that and customize it standard customization let's make this as of 12 31 2 2 run it and then customize it and i'm going to say that this is going to be let's remove the pennies brackets numbers make it red i'm doing this fairly quickly because we've seen this in the past this is our standard kind of external report customization for the purposes of the course on the header and footer i'm going to call this a summary balance sheet i'll put summary up front summary balance sheet and then close this out and then get rid of the date time report basis and that looks good i'm going to run it and then I'm going to save customization up top, putting it into our customized area. I'm gonna create a new group to put it in, adding a group. I'm gonna call it month end reports, reports and add the group and then make sure that that's in the dropdown, saving it. So now we've got our balance sheet. If I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this out, go to the first tab, refresh the tab and then scroll on down to the reports in the customized area and there's our balance sheet report notice you might also want to number it so if i was to save customization uh we might then want to actually let me go back here and open up the report summarize or let's edit it here edit the report i'm going to put a number one in front of it so that it'll be in order instead of alphabetical order so i'll save that so there we have it it's saved and boom so there it is so let's go back to the to the second tab let's make a, a comparative balance sheet let's make a quarter by quarter breakout drop down quarters i'm gonna run it i'll do my editing up top or customizing and let's say bracketed numbers red remove the pennies and then on the header and footer i'm going to make this a balance sheet let's say by quarter by quarter and then remove the date time report basis again and run it so there it is let's customize it save customization i'm going to put it into my month end reports and then i'm going to call it number two balance sheet by quarter and i'll save that one and now i'm going to change it again making a comparative balance sheet so i'm going to select the drop down back to the totals only and then let's just do um, a month by month comparison so i'll say 12 uh 01 22 to 12 31 22 and then i'm going to select the drop down here and compare it to the prior period november i'm going to show the dollar change and percent change and then run it so there's that and i already have the nice formatting here on the numbers and whatnot let's save that one so actually i should change the name so this should be this should be a comparative balance sheet let's say comparative comparative balance sheet month month by month or current and prior month or something current and prior month and so i could say okay let's go ahead and uh run it and then i'll customize it and so this is going to be actually i'm going to i'm going to close this out for a second and i'll save the name so i'm going to say copy that because it's going to try to save it as the other so i'm going to say save customization i'm going to say this is number three and hopefully that will not overwrite the uh, the prior one we saved but rather make a new one i'll save it i'll double check it tab to the left run 
or refresh the screen and just check this out. So now we've got three over here. That looks good. And maybe I'll make one more. And let's say we're going to say, let's say last quarter or let's say uh, last quarter to last quarter or year by year. Let's go from, from, uh, this is going to be from 010122. Actually, I'm on this tab. This is going to be from 010122 to 123122. Run it and maybe compare it to the prior year, which there's nothing in, but we'll just do that one. And then I'll say current, I'll call this a comparative balance sheet prior, uh, current, current and prior, prior year, prior, prior year. And then I'm going to copy that and I'm going to save it, save customization. And then I'll change the name up top to boom. This is going to be number four and there it is. So we'll save that. So there we have it. So now when we're, when we're going to be organized, these organizing these at the end of the month, I can go into my reports. I can run it again. I can go into my customized reports and possibly I can have someone else do this because it should be a pretty standardized process. Meaning I can give it to a staff member or something and just say, I would like to print these reports change the date range to whatever the relevant date range is, save it as a PDF or print it as a bundle. So let's look at those options. I'm going to go into the summary report. Actually, let's do it this way. I'll go back and I'm going to right click and open it in a new uh, tab. So does it let me do that? Right click and I'm going to say open in a new tab. It's not giving me that option. That's weird. I, the other reports usually do. Anyways, I'll click on it. And then we can just change the name up top or the dates and the name should be should be good. So then our options are to email it, but then you typically have to send one at a time. We can print it, which would be useful if you're going to be handing it to somebody. But sometimes that's not the case. Oftentimes we're going to have to email it or put it on a cloud drive, which means we want to export it to a PDF generally. And we'll talk about exporting to Excel later which could be a nice option for us to then use Excel to create all the reports on one PDF file. So I'm going to export to a PDF. This is the format that it looks like. So most of the time we're good on the, on the default formatting. Notice you have a couple options to the right portrait landscape. A uh, smart page fits helps it to fit, you know, on one page, meaning we don't want two pages wide typically, and then repeat the page header. Here's the header up top. If, if you have two pages and you don't want the header on there, you can remove the repeat page header. So that's, those are some nice options here, but it's still quite limited. Uh, if you get to a longer reports that are quite wide in nature and you're to force it to fit on one page wide, for example, then it can change the, the size of the font, which will be different than the other size of the fonts or the other reports. And so in those cases, sometimes it's useful to export it to Excel where you have further formatting options there. Uh, and once again, here we can email, we could save as a PDF, we can print it. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a PDF. So there it is. I'm going to pull this to the right and then grab my folder. So I've got a folder here that's going to say QuickBooks Online. In, in practice, you might call it your client folder. I'm going to call it a test drive because this is, that's what I'm naming the first half of the course where you might put it as clients. For example, you might have another folder that would be broken out by date, which would be quite common, maybe by year, for example, and then have your reports in there each year. Uh, and then I'm going to go into my reports and I'm just going to drag this one into my reports. There it is. So notice that it gives us the name with no, with no, um, spaces. So that's usually pretty good. It doesn't, it didn't put the number one on it. So I'm going to try to number my reports in here because when I send them out, I would like to give an idea of which reports I think the client should open first. Okay. Let's do it again. I'm going to pull this back on over. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to try to go back to, to my reports. So that gets us back into my, my custom reports here. And then I'll do the same thing for the, for the second one, the balance sheet. And there it is. So I call balance sheet by quarter. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, export this to a PDF. Boom, I'll, it looks like it's fitting on one page because it's got the smart fit. So I'll go ahead and notice there's the title repeating. So if you didn't want the title to repeat, you can take that one off and that'll not have the title repeating. So either way could, you know, you might like either format, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a PDF. It's gonna open up down here because I'm in Google Chrome. Note that if you're in another browser, Firefox or Explorer or whatever, it's gonna show up however the forms show up in those browsers, possibly with an arrow up top in, in uh, Firefox, for example, or something. Right click and I'm going to edit and put a two in front of this one. And then I'll go back on over. We'll do it two more times. Dos vases mas. And then we're gonna say number three, open that up. And let's go ahead and export that to uh, a PDF. And it fits on one page because we got the smart fit. So that looks good. Mui B to the end. Let's save it and go pull that on over boom i'm going to right click rename it rename number three. Oh, wait a second so i'm gonna don't name that way do it again don't delete it just put a three in front of it that's what i'm trying to do you know what i was trying to do you just made it messed it up on purpose so i'm going to go back on over and say this is number four last one and let's go ahead and download the pdf save it as and we're going to go ahead and pull that one over the final it's the final countdown number number four i don't know why i have that song in my head i think i heard that song there's a final countdown song so so there they are so now once you have them here you can add these one by one to an email attachment but four and four connect four attachments isn't too bad but we're going to be adding other reports to this as well such as income statement reports so it would probably be better if you can give it to them possibly in a cloud drive format like a, a, a google drive or or microsoft OneDrive or whatever uh or or dropbox right uh, or you can zip it and give it in an attachment in an email, which I think would be a little bit nicer, which I can do by adding another folder. And I'm going to call these reports, reports. And let's say these are as of 12.31.22. Uh, and then I'll put these reports in it, grabbing them, dragging them in to the folder. And then I can right click on the folder and I can zip it. I can say zip it just like I told my my dog when it was barking zip it compress what well, says compress now compress it so there it is so you might not have the same compression you might have like a folder with a zipper on it or something like that but the point is that you can now attach this file directly to an email so instead of having multiple attachments that they would have to open one by one you've got the one file and I and I think it's kind of nice if you're going to give it in this k in this way in this format to then have the numbers as well meaning now you've got the numbered files so they can open it and you have some indication on how they should you know what order they should open them okay so th that's th those are the formats we can provide the the files remember your other options if i go back here and i go to my reports are to create your management reports which can help you to combine it in one file and give you some some like a, a lead sheet or a, a header page so we looked at that in a prior presentation although it's somewhat limited still but that's one way you can get everything into one pdf for example and make it look a little bit more uh, professional uh, we can also use as we'll see in a future presentation excel to export these to excel and then use excel to get all the reports on one pdf file and if you really want to do uh, uh, the best job that has the most flexibility then you can use some format of Excel and possibly Word or possibly try to do the wording in Excel too, which can be a little bit tricky uh, in order to, to create, you know, a, a lead page, a header page and whatnot, a table of contents in that format. That's the most time consuming uh, format that you can basically use. 
So next time we'll talk about how to export to Excel, how to use Excel and a PDF printer to basically get all these documents that we got here onto one PDF file formatted a little bit differently, but also allowing you to have the formatting of Excel over and above what you might be able to do uh, within QuickBooks. So just a quick look at the cog and the business view. We've really just been spending our time in the reports, which under the business view is under the business overview and then the reports.